Hey, welcome back film lovers. Uh, thank you for watching this video and I'm so excited to be making this. Uh, I just wanted to show you the type of gears that I use to digitize, to develop and scan my work, my film. Just so you know, I'm gonna talk about the type of equipment and also chemicals that I use to develop and scan film from home. So first of all, I don't want you to feel like I have some type of knowledge into chemicals, uh, film chemicals. The reason why I got into developing my film myself from home is mostly because I wanted to have the control over my work, you know, because as most of us know, the most important side of film is not just, you know, everything you do before, is mostly what is done after. So if you don't have the control over, uh, this process, the chemicals, the scanning process, I feel like I'm losing control over my work. And this is just a personal feeling. I know you don't have to, like myself, sometimes I'm just lazy to do this, but I just wanted to show you why this can be beneficial. So please, uh, as I say, this video is mostly just to show you the type of equipment that I use to develop and scan my film. I'm not really gonna, I'm not gonna get into the gritty nitty of uh, this is the type of chemical you need and this is why you need them. So here, as you can see, so here we have the developer, the blakes and the stabilizer. So this is all you need to develop your film. This is the most easiest way to start developing your film from home, color film. So I know most people do black and white because this is what we do. Uh, most people did in school. Like I didn't go to school uh, to learn photography. So. Uh, but I know most people do black and white. And to me, I just, like, this was a side of photography, film photography, that I didn't want to get into. Like, I, I never want to deal with chemicals or scanning anything because I was just so stressful to do something funny and just to lose all my work. So, but please uh, give this a try. I'm going to put the name of all this uh, in, in, in the descriptions for beginner. If you never done this, I really suggest you to buy the, the kit from color tech C41, I think it's called, uh, this is easier because it come, uh, in a small, uh, bottle, like liquid bottle. So you just mix them up and it get, it gives you this. So, uh, this is, um, I've been using, I think more than 15 rows. And they say you're supposed to use 25 or 32. It depends. I've been using more than 15 and my picture is a fine. So enough with all the chemicals. As I said, I'm going to do a special video on developing film from home. If you want, I'm not a pro. Like I just started to do this this year. And, um, so before I get into this type, uh, this brand uh, by Lomography, I think it's called Digitalizer. Before I get into this, I was using my cheap Epson uh, film holder. And one day I just break them because it was just too plasticky filling. And, uh, and this one feels like robust. You know, I can trust this. Um, you want to make your process easier. Like film is stressful enough to have again some gears that, um, gears that you cannot rely on. So this was, um, you know, decision, like I just had to invest. I think this was like 40 euro because, you know, I'm in France, so. I can see the pictures. Some of them are dark. Let me just open this. So, I can see the pictures. This is, this is awesome. This is like my first roll. Uh, color. I picked this up for, um, I think I picked this up for 15, 15 euro. So the way this work, uh, as you know, um, so after you develop your film, you dry your, uh, your negative, your positive, you put them into this, uh, film holder and you put your, 
uh, so everything here so you put this onto here and then you take the picture of your negative you know that's really how I'll do it and, um, and what I like about this box is uh, this light panel it's it, it's it's a really it's really powerful I mean now you cannot really see it because I have all this huge my big light is popping but this is super bright like this is a really bright light. So this is the macro lens that I'm using. This is one of the best macro lens in the world. This is what people say. And, and I test this out on my digital camera and also on film. <sighs> this is crazy. This gives me 1.1 1, 1 .1 macro. So yeah, uh, this is this is pretty much my equipment. And, uh, and of course, obviously, you need a tripod, you know, to take the picture of the negative. So honestly one of the reasons why you might need to get this equipment first of all i know you can get a, a scanner like you can get one of those epson v 600 700 or even 500 would do the job to me since i'm a person that moves a lot like i travel to not gonna say i travel to many countries but i'm constantly moving sometimes so i just wanted to have a kit uh that i could take into my backpack like I can pack this into my backpack so easy um, and also my light panel so I can be traveling the world with this light panel the film holder and my lens and this lens I can use this lens for uh, many purposes so now I know if I'm traveling to all these countries I don't have to stress out to to you know to to pack my Epson V600 into my backpack or into any suitcases because if you travel with scanners, it can be really stressful. So I just wanted to have a really light pack like this to make sure if I'm going, going somewhere like in Senegal or in some West African country, I know that I have my film kit that I can just do a photo shoot, go home, and do my job all right so look let me know what type of gears that you have i know uh you guys most people that i follow have uh you know flat base scanners mostly v600 or 700 but uh, i just wanted to really show you the type of gears that i use and one of the reasons that i also really got me to develop my film is to have just more control over my work and I don't do this all the time, but I do this like 95% of the time. Like when you see my work, those are my work. Like I take this to the lab myself and I do all the scanning and processing. And um, yeah, so look, um, let me know what you think. I, I, I'm really looking forward to do more videos. As, as I said, I'm just renovating my place, uh, moving things around. So if you just want to say to anyone here trying to make videos constantly if you cannot make a video it's fine i don't want you to stress out because i didn't have time to make a video if you cannot it's fine you don't have to stop everything around you so you can get your video done um at least i don't have to so when i have situations like last three weeks if i cannot make a video i'm not going to kill myself so but i'm i'm, I'm going to have you know this week coming week i'm gonna make more videos so next time i will probably make a video where i'm developing my film from home and i just want to really show you how chill this can be i don't want you to feel so stressful like a lot of videos that i watch you have to do it like this if you don't know like you can do like if if you see me developing my film sometime i don't even respect the timing you know i don't have i don't even respect the temperature of the water and my pictures come out fine you know so this is also something that i want to break uh about this industry is that you have to be so uh a physician about film you need to know chemistry and stuff I don't think you have to always know like myself um like i'm getting into a conversation that i was not supposed to 
<laughs> Just a big disclaimer, I wanted to say I'm not downgrading anybody who's not uh, scanning or developing their work from home. I just thought this was a good idea to take your film journey to this level because I think um, you just, you know, open a different door to enjoy more of this, you know, magical process. So please don't take it as an insult or as anything um, like you're not a real photographer if you're not developing a film because I've heard so many people in this film community saying if you're not developing a film you're not a real photographer so I just wanted to make sure that you don't think that's what I meant thank you